Chatting with Matt the Bat. Chatting with Matt the Bat. Chatting with Matt the Bat. You chat, I chat, we chat, I'm Matt chatting with Matt the Bat. Yeah! Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Matt the Bat from Matt the Bat's Bat Shit Shit Show, and this is yet another episode of the critically acclaimed series, Bat Chats. How is it critically acclaimed, you ask? It's not, but it could be. So make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, drop a comment. Maybe even hit that little bell notification Ding! if you're feeling generous. That way you can stay up to date on the, the millions and billions of episodes that I have queued up because the fun is just beginning. Today is a much different episode and one that is incredibly close to my heart. And as you know, the series is all about bridging perspectives and hearing from incredible people. And today I have one of the most badass people in my life on. Her name is Rushni Kamta and she's a great college friend of mine who was uh, diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer a few years ago. Don't worry, she's doing great now. And she actually has been using her diagnosis and experiences to empower other women to advocate for their own health. But I won't tell you too much. I'll let her explain the rest. It's an honor to welcome Rushni to the stage. Come out, come out, woo! <laughs> Yeah. yeah. How, how'd you like that that uh that applause from the from the bat audience? I loved it. I loved it. I'm I want applauses from the bat audience all the time. Amazing. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe you can hire them. Um, currently, they're forced against their will in the studio, but um, someday maybe <laughs> once <laughs> once things are get I get the show going a little bit more, you could uh, borrow them for yourself, and you could bring them on all your interviews, right? <laughs> exactly. So, how have you been? It's been a while since I've seen you. IRL because of obviously because of COVID and everything else. So how have you been? Yeah, last time you saw me, I was bald and I had no eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was gonna say your uh, hair looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I've been doing pretty well. Um, I mean, you know, since quarantine, I just like working from home. Um, I got a dog. Um, she's a little Ooh. puppy. Um, her name's Layla. Um, I've yeah, you know, I've just been like trying to get myself like mentally like understand my mental health more like since being diagnosed and now like being uh post-cancer um and then like you know reintegrating myself into the like social world again as a 25 year old um so yeah oh my god when you said 25 that just kind of freaked me <laughs> out for a second because i think when we met we were probably like 18 in the dorm like that's crazy. i know i know that's crazy ah that's so crazy <laughs> yeah and a little background about how we know each other for for new people who um don't know rushni we were we actually went to school together at pace university we lived in the same dorm and we were actually neighbors one year yes, and yes. we were living with my now girlfriend who i've been dating yes. for years <laughs> um, and yeah, so we've got to know each other pretty well over the the past couple of years, and it's been uh, it's been an honor to be your friend because I've I feel like a lot of the things that you've gone through have taught me so much, and um, you just have a really amazing story. So I would just kind of love to hear from your perspective, like what what happened and like how did this all go down? Like what's the story about how how it all happened? Yeah, I mean it was totally random. Um, I mean it, so I mean I was living with your girlfriend at the time um, at our Brooklyn apartment. Um, and I guess like earlier that year, I felt like a lump and I was just like, this is weird. Like, should I be doing something about it? I don't know. Um, so like I asked um, Emily and, you know, just we're, our mindset was, you know, we're in our twenties, like this is normal, like whatever. So I was like, okay, like everyone has lumpy breasts, cool. Um, and so like a couple months went by and um, you know, I started experiencing like other symptoms. Like I had a lot of um, bruising on my left arm um, and I, you know, just felt my arm hurt a lot on my left side. Um, and it just had like a lot of tenderness. I was like, you know, I'm a very clumsy person. <laughs> like I got <laughs> stuck in the subway doors. Oh, and this, no. is how, all, this is how all my symptoms started to like come out actually. Is I got stuck in the subway doors. Wow. So stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did not know and, that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very. Um, yeah. Very, very laughable you. moment. Yeah. On the L train, <laughs> like taking a big fat L on the L train. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I like maybe like a couple weeks, like maybe two weeks later after that happened, I like, you know, um, noticed that there was like blood in my bra and I was like, okay, well, that's not normal. Um, and I, I think that Emily was out of town um, at the time and, oh, she was at a wedding. I remember this, she was at a wedding and so I was alone in the apartment and I was like, okay, so what, what, like, what should I do? So then I like went on ZocDoc and I like found a doctor, like a GYN in 
uh, Chinatown. And I like went the next day, like early Saturday morning. Uh, so like I went and, you know, I saw her and I was like, oh my God, like this is what's happening. Like there's blood in my bra and like it hurts. There's a lump there. And like the doctor, so I picked this doctor cause she was Indian. Like I was really trying to like look for a doctor that had like a similar background just to like, you know, be a little more comfortable with what I was like talking about and what I was like, you know, about to like say like you know that yeah, there's like totally. blood and all this stuff. yeah other stuff and like the doctor was like kind of like pushing it off you know she was asking me like um do you have any family history um do you um you know you're, how old are you and i was like well i'm 22 about to be 23 i don't have any family history and so she's kind of like kept like pushing my like urgency off you know i just like you know Blood is not supposed to come out of your nipple. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say that out here, but No, you like, can, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's not like that's not a normal thing. So Yeah, definitely not. So, you know, she was like, Okay, like let's get a ultrasound. And like it being Saturday, like she was like kind of like playing it nonchalant, like, oh, like go get an ultrasound like next week kind of thing. And my me, I was like, No, I'm gonna go like today and go find the like closest place. So I went. Uh, and it was like down the street and I went and I like to the receptionist it was, it was busy it was Saturday and it was busy and I like go up to the receptionist she was like around my age and I was like well so this is what's happening and like I don't know what's happening I need to find out like quick and so she was like okay like I'll get you in so she got me in like about 20 minutes later um, and then I did the ultrasound um, and so when the woman was doing the ultrasound like she kept going like over my breast and then like multiple times like over my arm pit and like I thought that was strange because I didn't like think about my armpit I just thought about like my left breast um so you know I asked her like oh is there something wrong and I was trying to look at the screen I'm like I have no idea what yeah. I'm looking at I'm like read this shit. Yeah. <laughs> right it doesn't make any sense so she's like she's like oh like I can't tell you anything like you have to like the doctor has to look at it and all this stuff and they'll tell you so I got the CD and I like ran back to the OBJM and her office like was full of people and I like ran to her receptionist and I said hey like I got the sonogram back can she please look at it like right now and she's like well she's with a patient look she'll look at it in a bit so I leave the cd with her and then I go to a coffee shop nearby and I'm like just sitting there like like you know just like shaking yeah. kind of because I'm like what do I do like I yeah, just so felt much like waiting <laughs> right yeah, yeah like I, I felt like I was like um like I was just like freaking out, but it was like, I was walking aimlessly around New York. And so then I sat in a coffee shop and I was like, okay, I'm gonna wait here until she calls me back. She didn't call me back. <gasps> and so I just kept calling her and her receptionist kept picking up. So I was like, and like Matt, you know me, I'm not a mean person. Like I'm no. also not the type of person to like, you know, if I get the incorrect order, I'll just eat it. I'm not gonna tell the waiter to like bring it back and bring the oh. correct order. <laughs> You should be one of those people that does that, though. So actually, I've learned to be like that now. Nice, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, survive cancer. It's like you, you kind of like are like, okay, like I, you know, I wanted this certain thing, like I should be able to get it, you know. Of course, hundred <laughs> percent. The, you know, the doctor. She called me back maybe like an hour later. It felt like a very long time. So she's like, I need to get a needle biopsy, and it was Saturday, and in New York they don't do needle biopsies on the weekend. So like freaking out, I was like, okay, well, I can't do it today. Like I need to do it soon then. So um, I called and said, and I called my GYN again. And I said, okay, like if I can't get it Saturday, what's the quickest that I can get it? And so she's like, okay, well, I'll call whatever. And they said that I can get it in the middle of May or towards the end of May. And mm -hmm. when I was going to see this GYN, it was April, it was like April. 24th ish and also like on top of all this waiting you've already done they're telling you have to wait more and also like it, i guess sorry to interrupt i'm just do you, no. do you know what like any of these things mean at the time like do you like because i don't i don't know what these medical terms mean like i don't know like i mean biopsy i get but like i don't know i feel like it's just such a crazy scary moment to not only have to be waiting for all this these things and then also be like getting things done to you that you don't even know what they mean like as you said like the doctor was like touching your armpit and shit and you didn't know like I don't yeah. know, it's just excruciating. So to have somebody tell you, yeah, another month or whatever, it's like, that's like, 
Oh my God, that's crazy. Right? It's like, you know, you, you just want answers. You want to like know, like, I mean, especially like living in New York, everything's like so fast paced and yeah, totally. you can get things delivered in like two seconds. Like that's how like our generation is, right? Um, so the GYN tells me like, I wouldn't be able to go until like the middle towards the end of May. And I was like, that, that's like a whole month. Like, I can't wait for that. And so, you know, and she kept telling me, she's like, you waited um, long enough to get your symptoms checked out. Like, that was uh, condescending of her. Yeah, <laughs> victim blaming, that's f Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I kind of like blacked out. Um, I think maybe because my personality is not mean. So like maybe my body's just like, we're gonna black you out and be like really mean right now. <laughs> uh, so like, I was yelling at her. I don't like, know exactly what I was saying to her. I think I was telling her, you know, like, I have serious symptoms here. Like I have a lump, there's blood, like that's not a good sign. Um, I need you as a doctor, as my doctor right now to get me a quicker appointment. Um, yeah. I need something within the next week. Um, and like I, I told her, I don't appreciate you talking to me like this because you're making me feel like I'm overreacting, which yeah, does I happen. It's frustrating. Right, which I was in my head, I was almost at the point where like I was gonna believe her and like, you know, wait that month. Um, so then I met up with my friend in Washington Square Park and I went to her apartment and then she was like, you need a drink. So like we went to go get a drink. <laughs> um, and then as we were there, my doctor called me again and said that um, she got me an appointment for that following Wednesday uh, so that I had my biopsy that following Wednesday. So a needle biopsy is very interesting because it literally goes through your boob. Oh <laughs> it's God. like a did, big did they have needle to numb that you up? goes right in. Or did they just do it? They oh did. God. They did numb me, but it did not help because I mean, younger women. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm. Oh man, I feel so bad. That's terrible. Like imagine a needle. <laughs> can I say this? Imagine if a needle goes in your penis. I, I can imagine that's terrible. Like imagine that. And you're definitely allowed to say that. <laughs> The penis needle is definitely something I, I want on my channel. To <laughs> it helps put things into perspective. <laughs> I know. There's like a bunch of like women who be like, hashtag penis needle. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Everybody comment penis needle down below. That's how I know you'll watch it this far. <laughs> I don't know. I just, it has to feel so surreal to be like in the office and having that happen to you. I can't even imagine. Oh my God. Yeah. And like the technician, like the tech and the doctor, um, you know, they were like, the one woman was like, you're like my daughter's age. And the other one was trying to make me laugh while this is happening because she felt really bad. Um, and as she's doing this, I'm like facing the screen, like trying to like decipher what is going on. So yeah. basically what they did was like take the lumps that I felt um, and take samples of it. And that's where they do like a pathology report, which I guess in the medical way, it's like taking a magnifying glass and seeing if it's cancerous or not. Mm -hmm. So I thought I only had one lump. I had three. I had one in my breast and then two in my armpit, which I didn't know that was possible. Um, yeah, what? Yeah, it's crazy. And all this time I was working too, right? Because I was just like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what to tell my job. Yeah. Um, and, and knowing just the way New York companies operate, it's so hard to like <laughs> make excuses in New York for anything. Like what would seem like an excuse or like, I don't know. I know how that is too. So yeah, of course, like you're carrying on your daily life and dealing with this tremendous stress on the outside of it. It's oh my god, it's crazy. And at this point, you don't you don't know the diagnosis yet, even right? Right. Yeah, I have no wow. idea. So then I leave and I go back to the apartment and I'm like just watching like Sex and the City, like just something to like take my mind off of it. Um, and like then like my roommate like Emily comes up and like we're just like talking and I'm just like. I don't know, it just happened to me. Like, I just have no idea. Like, I'm just very like, what is going on? Um, so then the next day, so that was Wednesday and the next day was Thursday. So I was working from home and then I went to Astoria to like, just hang out with my friend who was a barista there and just like get my mind off of what was happening. And then the doctor called um, to ask me to come into her office the next morning at 9 a.m. So that was, going to be Friday. Um, so my dumb ass was like, I'm going to go by myself. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm going to go by myself. And my cousin who lived in New York at the time was like, you're not going by yourself. Like, I'm coming with you. 
Um, and then my friend, like one of my best, my, my other best friends was like, oh, I'm going to come with you too. Like, I'm going to, you know, we're both just going to come with you. So I was like, okay, like whatever, like come with me. I think I was just in denial. I like had no idea. Like, you know, when you just like know something bad's going to happen, your mind's trying to like trick yeah, you. Totally. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I know what you mean. so I go into the doctor's office. Right. And she made me wait, like, I think like an hour. Oh and God, so, that's so much waiting. <laughs> right. And so before I even get into like, her like office, like um, I have to do like, I think your blood pressure or whatever. And the like mm -hmm. nurse is like asking me, she was like, oh, like, do you have any family history of breast cancer? And I was like, no. Oh my God. And I thought that was weird. questions. Why right. do they, why do they set it up like that? They already know it's at not, this point, right? Right, but it, they're not supposed to do that. Like, there's a way to have patient care, and it's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> yeah, it's like traumatizing to like, oh, I'm just gonna throw this in here. Like, while you're, oh my god, and you don't have family history, right? Yeah, I don't have family history. Wow. That is shocking. Uh, That's crazy too, though, right? Yeah, and like I've done gene testing, and everything's come back negative. And I've done gene testing again when I was done with treatment, and that was still negative. Um, so wow. yeah, it's just bad luck. <laughs> So you're, so you're in the office at this point and you're about to hear from them and they're just scaring the living shit out of you pretty much while you wait. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, American healthcare system. <laughs> yep, sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, so I go into her office and I go to sit on like, you know, the medical table. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I go to sit there and she's like, don't sit there. And I was like, okay. And she sits me in a chair and she's like sitting across from me and she's like looking me dead in the eye. And I was like, oh, like oh she's God. gonna tell me and or kill she goes, you right, exactly. like, <laughs> the hell's going on just kill me. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> something <laughs> um she's she's like looking at me and she's like she looks like a puppy like she looks like a terrified puppy and i at that point i'm kind of pissed at her because she like didn't you know take me seriously the, yeah. like like just a week ago and she's like, I don't know how to tell you this. I don't know how to tell you this. My cousin is sitting next to me. She's pissed and my, oh my friend God. is pissed. And I'm just like, just tell me what it is. Yeah, what like, the fuck? <laughs> Right, like, I'm like, just what tell me. What the hell's me. going on? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, just tell me so I could do something about it. So like, I'm not just sitting here in this office. And, so, you know, eventually she tells me, but she starts it off like the whole like, one in eight women get diagnosed with breast cancer. And I'm mad at her for saying this to me. Like, that's yeah. the, that's a, statistic like that's fact but the fact that she was using it for me who was who at that time was 22 almost about to be 23 like yeah, wow. i thought that was f***ed up <laughs> yeah it's also just like i don't know i feel like a big such a big part about being a doctor is like you have to deliver that bad news it sucks doesn't make it easy but like i feel like maybe maybe some of it had to do with pride just because you know the week before she was like downplaying yeah. it so maybe it was a sense of pride or she was embarrassed that she was wrong i don't know but still it's not not helpful to you you know yeah yeah she definitely was embarrassed that she was wrong uh, i mean she felt bad like you could just tell in her tone of voice so like she eventually she tells me and then you know my cousin is married to someone who worked at mount sinai at the time um and so she calls him and like she like she asked all these questions and the doctor's repeating it to her and i'm like just sitting in this chair like like the room just feels like this. Like I'm just like yeah, floating in the okay. room. And so then the doctor gives me um, recommendations for oncology, like for oncologists on a post-it note. And I felt like, I don't know if you watch Sesame City, but maybe your viewers do, no. but. Yeah, maybe they do. Um, <laughs> Comment below if you watch Sex in the City <laughs> after you comment hashtag penis needle. <laughs> exactly. Um, it's like Carrie Bradshaw's character gets broken up with like with a post-it note. I felt exactly like that. I was like, oh my god, like this is just like the worst thing that can happen. Be written on a post-it note. Um, so eventually I leave, um, and then this whole whirlwind of um, you know I have to like. Go, I eventually go meet with my medical team at Mount Sinai because that's where my cousin got me in and he got me in with like the chief, yes, no, sorry, director of the breast center at Mount Sinai um, for my, as my surgeon and then my oncologist who specializes in triple negative breast cancer um, and they were awesome, like best medical care team I've had, like the nurses there were awesome, like 
they were all awesome because they understood like I was a young person and the, the nurses would like talk to me about like Netflix and like, you know, their dating life. Like, because I was literally around their age. <laughs> and also nice, nice for you, uh, you know, compared to the, the things you were dealing with before that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and like the way that I approached it, like I am a very like not serious. I mean, you know, me. I'm not very serious. Like I love yeah. to make jokes about things. And like a lot of my jokes have now have to do with like cancer and like very dark humor. Yeah, uh, well, actually, it's so funny you bring that up because I want I actually wanted to ask you um, while I was doing my creeping on you, I found that like cancer meme page. Uh, <laughs> it's called the cancer patient and it's, it's meant to like shed a satirical look at the life of a ca cancer patient. And I just couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, this is, I was just so shocked that you were able to bring humor to this situation, but also not because I know you. So it's very on brand for you, but it's just like, yeah, no, I was so one of my, I made one cancer meme on Twitter. It was like a, a Twitter thread of my cancer story my cancer story in office in the office memes and so oh, yeah. like i just I yeah yeah so then i one of my memes from there was reposted on the cancer patient so that was like my pride moment <laughs> i also saw the the um the britney spears photo on oh my god yes okay that was just iconic <laughs> So first, like, hashtag free Britney, like, it's messed up what she's going through, like, free Britney. Um, but yeah, I dressed up as her after she shaved her head, and now I feel bad for it because now I know, like, why she did it and all this stuff. But girl, I feel you. I also had to shave my head for horrible reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if there's someone to make a joke about it, it's you because you understand what everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, so you're in the, you're in the hospital, you're at Mount Sinai now, and this is during the summer or is this still like, this is all happening really quickly, right? Yeah. So that was May of 2019. And then I started treatment at the end of May, like well, Memorial Day weekend was like my first chemo treatment. Oh, and sorry, one more thing. I had to do, um, egg freezing because, um, chemotherapy, um, puts you into menopause which I'm telling everyone now that it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, I knew you you froze your eggs um, because I just remember when that this was all happening and everything like that. But yeah. it's just so crazy to me that you have to make a decision. I mean, you as a person, <laughs> I assume you weren't thinking about having kids anytime soon, but like being a 22 year old girl and you gotta like figure out this, uh, you know, you, it's just, it, it blows my mind that you have to like make those decisions when you're 22. And so I didn't know that it caused menopause. I didn't know that was the reason why. I guess it's because the, the, um, the eggs die when, yeah. when you're going through yeah. chemo. Like, so chemo is literally poison. Like I looked up one of the Jeez. chemo drugs that I got and it used to be used as like mustard gas for like war. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's it's f***ed up. <laughs> and you wow, and you so you've been mustard gassed, I guess. <laughs> exactly. I've been through war, guys. <laughs> yeah, more ways than one. Sheesh, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> um yeah, not fun. There's a lot of side effects that, you know, normal sorry, not I'm just like, you know, people who have not been through cancer or had to take care of someone that has been through cancer would know about. I lost my taste buds, so I couldn't eat anything. Like I could eat stuff, but it tastes like metal. Oh, wow. That's yeah. horrible. And you lose your nose hairs, which I didn't know was important. So I have a newfound appreciation for the little tiny for hairs. Nose hairs? <laughs> yeah, for nose hairs. That's another yeah, hashtag. Like eyelashes, eyebrows. I mean, those are, they're used to keep dust out. They're used to keep like, that's why you have eyelashes is so that little particles don't get in your eyes and stuff. So you were like, you were just like sniffing shit up everywhere because you had no nose hair. <laughs> was like oh my crazy. God, yeah. And it was like the summer in New York. And so you're sniffing like the hot trash. Oh like, no. <laughs> on the sidewalk and I'm like, oh, this smells so bad. And then like, you know, the like weird, like water that drips from buildings. Like it just like would go like straight in my eye. I was like, great. Like We call that mystery liquid. Yes, exactly. It's mystery liquid. It just like went searing into my eye. I'm like, great. Oh, God. <laughs> but I mean, my makeup looked great because I didn't have any hair on my face. So that was the plus. <laughs> I was going to say like, well, obviously there's no benefit to any of like, you know, <laughs> like there's no like physical benefit, but like, was it kind of interesting to feel your head without hair as someone who's always had long hair? 
yeah, that was the weird part. I didn't know what it was gonna look like without hair. And I didn't, just didn't know what to imagine. And I didn't think I would have such a round head. Um, <laughs> maybe I can send you a picture so you can like plop it in here, but like. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It was pretty I, round. Yeah, Good it for was. You. Yeah, it was very round and it was very. Mine's long. Oh yeah, you shaved your head too. Yeah, my head's just like a like a long egg or something. Like that. It's bad. So yeah. To, to be round is a dream of mine. So good for you. <laughs> <laughs> what has been the process since your diagnosis? Like, are you you're obviously back to work? You're you just told me before the interview that you're moving into a new apartment. Life seems like it's coming together, and unfortunately, you were in the situation where not only did you have the diagnosis and everything that came with it, but then you had COVID right after. <laughs> so like, yeah. you kind of have been missing out for a few years on doing like 20 year old things. And that's, that sucks. And I'm excited for you to go back to your normal life. I mean, I mean, I told you this before I was like taking the time to like, no, I've been going to therapy for now two years. Um, and I, and I found a therapist who's Guyanese, um, cause I'm, my parents are from Suriname. So it's like Mm -hmm. right next to each other. Um, so it's been nice to like find a therapist who, is West Indian and like understands things and like just talk about cancer and uh, like people don't understand how much cancer with your mental health like because I mean as you said you had no idea you didn't know any other like 20 something year old going through cancer like this is supposed to be the time in your life where you're like doing crazy shit all the time and staying awake until (laughs) 4am so like that kind of like with my head a lot it was just like trying to reintegrate myself and talking to my friends again, hanging out with them. Because at first when I was starting to do that, I was like, what do I talk to you about? Like, I have no idea. Even from the outside perspective, it's like, I don't know how to relate to you with some of these things because I haven't been through all this crazy stuff. So like that trauma that you have and those emotions that you have are yours. Like there's really, (laughs) it's so hard. It's so easy to like, you know, have sympathy for somebody, but to empathize and really Uh, understand like how someone feels in that situation and how you know with all the stuff going on in your life all these crazy life changes like I don't know I just I can imagine from your perspective it's so hard to explain that to somebody and so I think this therapy seems like it's a good thing right like it's going well yeah yeah it is and um I mean I would say like so one thing I appreciate from like my friends and family is like when they just want to listen to me like, because obviously they can't empathize because they don't, they've never experienced it. So they don't really 100% know, but they can like listen to me. And like, that's what they really wanted for me is like, just to listen about like what I've experienced, just to like, that's how I express how I'm doing. Like, you know, just just like talking, like makes me like open up more about my like feelings and stuff like that. So I have become a more of like chill and like, fuck it, I'm doing whatever I want. like. Um, on my two year diagnosis anniversary, I got my nose pierced. Um, nice. Yeah, I just like wanted a different you way to remember. Yeah, right. I wanted a different <laughs> way to like remember that day. Um, and so I did that. And like, just like, you know, I'm, I used to be like, you know, so f- focused on like what people thought of me, like, especially like in the brown Indian community, like that's like the forefront of like what you're, family thinks of you, what people think of you, what family friends think of you. And like, that was like heavily like on my mind all the time. And then now I'm just like, no, but that's going to make me go insane. Like I, you know, I had this terrible thing happen to me. Um, and then didn't, I hated the entire process. Like it just, it kind of like destroyed my mental health. Um, time to do you kind of thing. Right. Right. Exactly. And so that's why, you know, instead of saying the Americanized version of my name, which I used to you know, introduce myself to people as Roshni. I've now been really trying hard to say like, hey, I'm Roshni. And it, even if they say it wrong, I'm sticking to Roshni. Like I'll correct them and be like, oh no, I'm sorry, it's Roshni. Um, and I got a new job in um, the pandemic. And so at my new job, uh, I recently just like said to them like, hey, like I introduced myself as the American way, like here's the correct way to pronounce my name. And like, they were so nice about it and they started to, you know, correctly pronounce my name. That's amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, we talked about this before the show because I, I just wasn't sure. And I also didn't know because I, I just asked Emily recently 
Yeah. Um, and she's like, oh, no, this is the real way you pronounce it. But like, this is how everyone pronounces it in New York. And I'm like, oh, shit, it feels like somebody <laughs> it feels like you're I don't know. Like, I wish I knew because I would have I would have said that. Um, but I'm, I mean, I'm happy. That's great. Like, does it feel better? It feels more you. Yeah, I definitely feel like I used to have like in college, especially I used to have like very different two different lives. I felt like I felt I had a life at home and I had a life at college and I never wanted to mix the two because it felt like too much anxiety and I didn't know what like the result would be. Um, but, you know, as I've like made friends in college and like they, you know, they love my mom's food. They want to know about like Surinamese culture and, you know, they're down to eat curry, which is great. Of course. Um, that was one of the first things we connected on in college because I think I told you that, that I loved uh, curry. Yeah. <laughs> like, my mom's yeah. going to make it for you, but you're going to die. It's too spicy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you, Emily, like, you know, her and um, Grace like would come over to my house in New Jersey and like my mom would make food all the time. And, you know, even though it was spicy and Emily was like crying, she's like, this is so good. <laughs> and like, that made me so happy. Like, you know, having that shared experience, like with people that I care for, um, and I never had that really in high school because um, I tried to hide it so much. Um, the fact that I was, you know, Indian. Um, so and you yeah, grew up I'm, in Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, I grew up in Pennsylvania. But you used to have a fake ID that was from my town in college, which is hilarious. <laughs> yes, Milford, PA. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, it was it was Pennsylvania. I thought it was Connecticut. Oh, sorry. No, I meant to say Milford, Connecticut. That's what I meant to say. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say because I was like, I remember you showed me. It. I'm like, wait, what? And it was like <laughs> a fake ID of my town. I was like, it's the most insane thing. But yeah, I can imagine like Pennsylvania has got to be like one of the whitest places ever. <laughs> and so I yes. can imagine that uh yeah it's sometimes a lot of people from my experience growing up in connecticut a lot of people would rather kind of slip in and fly under the radar and americanize themselves in different ways uh in order to avoid talking about their culture and stuff like that so um i'm so i mean i'm so happy that i'm calling you by your right name after <laughs> yeah. uh, seven years of knowing you <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah i feel i'm like I'm like should i just tell all my friends now i'm like oh f it, i'm gonna just tell them um, but yeah, I just feel so much like I, you know, you know, I'm, I like wake up and I'm like, okay, like, you know, what, how do I feel like what is important to me? Like, you know, trying to emphasize like what is important to me? Cause I used to like care so much for other people and like leave my cup for myself, like very, very small. You know what though? I think, and sorry to interrupt. I think no. that for you, it's like, well, I don't know if you realize like how much you are still doing things for people. Like. Uh, I think you're doing a good job of maintaining, you know, your own self-interest with also helping other people because you've kind of become this amazing advocate for women to um, to know about their, I mean, now mental health too, because you've been seeing how it affects like the brain and stuff like that going through all this, but also just like their physical health and like, uh, you know, don't listen to the doctor when they're telling you that, you know, believe in your own, your own self and your body. Yeah. And, like, get checked out. Even if you are in your 20s, like you should go like do get a breast breast exam and stuff like that so um i think like you're a lot less selfish than you think <laughs> or what you're saying right now because you've been this person and like you've been able to spread the word uh everywhere because you're also in all these amazing publications like i was you know looking just googling your name like crazy and seeing like new york daily news ap news brown <laughs> magazine and like all these podcasts like you're kind of you're kind of a star and like the fact that you are getting on here and like talking about such an insane experience and like pushing out all the wisdom that you have and all the, the, all the growth you've had through it to other people who may be going through the same thing though. It's rare. Like there's someone out here who's going to be like reading every article and like, you know, it's going to give them hope to get through everything. So that's like, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I try to be very authentic. And when I speak about my story, because like, I don't want to sh sh sugarcoat anything because like the experience was so, traumatizing and just so much mental effort um so when people ask me questions i try to be very truthful and honest and you know if they don't like the answer like okay fine but i'm still gonna be you know true to myself and answer it the way that i want to um yeah so because you know when i was told like one in eight women like i never felt like i was at like the one in eight woman does that make sense yes yeah. um 
I didn't feel like that statistic because breast cancer mostly affects like white women and like older white women. That's what you see on commercials. Like, I get breast right. cancer commercials all the time um, while I'm watching The Bachelorette. Like ABC, if you're watching, <laughs> please stop yeah. targeting me. Um, I see those too. I, I don't think you're alone. I see it as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like this old woman going to her grandchild um, um, play. And I'm like, I'm not an old woman. Like I don't have any grandchildren. Um, right, right. So yeah, I just you know want to authentically like talk about my experience so that like women and men you know understand like it's important to know your health like have your girlfriend boyfriend you know fill you up like do their <laughs> <laughs> like exam uh, homemade penis needle. <laughs> 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 just kidding. Imagine. <laughs> we do not recommend that <laughs> no no homemade penis needle that's a disclaimer not, not a lot. but you can drop the hashtag hashtag penis needle below <laughs> and you get your free penis needle no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> this is a horrible segue from penis needle but <laughs> i was gonna say um speaking of old white women my grandma was diagnosed with breast cancer when i was in high school and so that's been my experience with it was like seeing her go through chemo and it was crazy because while she was going through the, <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying this after penis needle. This is so weird. <laughs> this is my worst segue yet. But, um, so she was, she was going through all that, all, you know, chemo and everything like that. And mm -hmm. my grandpa was then diagnosed with leukemia. So oh my gosh. it was like crazy. They both had yeah. cancer together and they both were going through chemo together. We're both bald together and we unfortunately lost him. But my grandma has just been living her life and she's like this badass, you know, 70 something year old woman. And it's yeah. like, um, I don't know. I feel like you've probably met a lot of people sort of like that who like, because you're obviously the youngest person and they're, they probably find some, uh, solace, I guess you could say, in talking to you and you probably will find that for them because it is hopeful seeing people like my grandma come out of it. And mm -hmm. of course you coming out of it. Like, I don't know. It's just, uh, I can imagine that's kind of like an interesting bond that you would have with other people. Um, yeah. they don't show you the correct ads because <laughs> it's only them, but yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, no, I agree with that. And like, not even like, like only cancer, like it, people I've met like over Instagram over this past like year and a half. Um, and we've talked about, you know, depression. We've talked about like, you know, family relationships and like just like deeper things that you wouldn't talk about with like when you're 18, you know, mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah. just more like less of the surface level and more of like the deep stuff. Like what is your trauma? Not really, but like, you know, just like, <laughs> you know, just like, you know, just opening up more and just talking about the hard stuff and like connecting that way. And I felt, I feel like in my friendships and uh, relationships that I've made in the past year and a half, I, we, we've discussed more about that. Um, I've met, you know, people on Instagram who've I lost your parents to cancer. I've met people like in different countries who've experienced cancer. Um, I've met this girl who's in college who just finished uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma treatment. Um, and, you know, she's back in college too. So we kind of relate like going back into like being normal young people and like someone's asking you your name and you're ready to tell them that you had cancer basically yeah like where else i don't know where else do you get the the space to open up with people other than when you're connecting on something like this like right um it's really interesting like i never thought about how many doors that opens in terms of being able to as you said talk about those things that are like these existential things like you obviously like if you're if you're both in this position you have a lot to you've thought about these things a lot more than the average person like me I'm mm -hmm. like I don't I'm not thinking about that stuff so it's like um I don't know wow that's just really that must be so nice to have that uh, connection as as well as horrifying and and uh strange <laughs> I would imagine as well yeah yeah but I've appreciated like these conversations that I, I've had with people um it just you know it makes me realize like okay like everyone's going through something we don't know what it is but like you know not everyone's life how we see on Instagram or you know uh all social media like how it's portrayed as being like you know glamorous happy whatever like there are other things going on too and like that's okay too thank you so much for coming on i mean this has been awesome for me uh you know normally the show features creators so to have someone with like a really i mean you're you're creative yourself but like <laughs> you know like someone with a unique perspective that's maybe not just about youtube videos and the stuff that i i put on here i think is really 
um, awesome. And I hope that, you know, whatever small platform I have, I can use to help spread uh, advocacy. And, you know, I'm happy to do so because that's what this is all about. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, I wish that there were people with bigger platforms that did the same kind of thing, because I feel like if there was that, if you were going through this and there was that one YouTube channel that did like a really cool interview like this and you got to hear someone amazing like yourself talk, you could have, uh, you know, had some had some more information going into like your treatments and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I hope yeah. that there's someone out there that sees this and is like really inspired and I'm sure there will be. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thankful that you asked me to be on your show and, you know, Matt, I think you're a very creative person. You have re- like rad ideas and, you know, you keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rushni, thank you so much for coming on. Her socials will be listed below along with some helpful links. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe. Maybe comment hashtag penis needle, whatever you want. Um, or you can comment how cool Rushni is. Uh, that would be that would be also awesome and a little bit more, more you know, helpful than hashtag penis needle which <laughs> cause some weird attention to the to the to the stream but you know um, yeah thank you so much uh i'm at the bathroom at the bats bat shit show uh this was bat chats so everybody tune in next week or else this is where you say or else oh sorry okay hold on. or else or else that, oh yeah, I, like that, I like that one i don't know how to bring okay it. okay <laughs> thanks <laughs>